astrophotographers and welcome to galaxy season. We are now in the uh, second week of March, uh, which means the uh, winter astrophotography targets are on their way out and uh, I hope you were able to capture some of those objects like uh, the Orion Nebula, the Rosette Nebula, M78. Uh, in my area it was super cloudy even, uh, even for Ontario. I probably got realistically four to five clear full nights this winter. Uh, so, and from the sounds of it, that's kind of been the way it's went uh, on the East Coast anyway, for all of you. So that's too bad, but I hope you were able to capitalize on those nights that were clear. Being in uh, March now, galaxy season is here, and which basically means that uh, from March until about May, June, uh, the majority of the uh, targets that are going to be in the uh, window of opportunity for astrophotography will be uh, smaller galaxies. Uh, which is awesome if you have a telescope with a long focal length, such as an SCT, uh, because you can really get some nice close-ups of these objects with some serious detail. Unfortunately, I, I don't have a telescope with a long focal length. Even my 8-inch uh, Newtonian is 800 millimeters. So that's really not enough to get a, an up-close, detailed view at some of the smaller galaxies. But uh, with that being said, it's still nice to get some wide-field shots of galaxies if you own a small refractor. I'm going to be using my Explorer Scientific 102mm um, triplet to uh, photograph galaxies this season, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. In this video, I'm going to give you, I think, about eight or nine different galaxy targets uh, that you could shoot this spring uh, that I've imaged before and I, I'm going to continue to uh, improve upon. Okay, let's get down to business. Let's look at some of these galaxy season targets you can uh, start shooting tonight if it's clear in your area. So the first one is the Leo triplet and uh, these objects are M65, M66 and NGC 3628. Uh, it's in the constellation Leo of course and uh, in a wide field refractor, these uh, will fit nicely and um, you'll be able to capture a lot of surrounding stars in the area. But uh, you can also pick up some, some good detail and these three galaxies um, have some color to them and they're, uh, they're, all three are a little different. So that's a nice object. The next one up is uh, M81 and M82 and this is in the constellation Ursa Major. So this is looking north. And uh, I will say because of how close these galaxies are in relation to Polaris, uh, you may have some issues um, auto-guiding with PhD. I've, I've had many issues uh, guiding in this area in the past, and uh, actually those, those issues have been sorted out since I switched to my new auto-guiding system with the uh, Altair camera and the Starway 50mm scope. And uh, to be honest, that was I was using PhD guiding the, the first edition. So uh, you may or may not have trouble with that, but um, there's information online about adjusting settings for uh, auto guiding close to the North Celestial Pole. So this these are known as uh, Bode's Galaxy and the Cigar Galaxy, and they're both full of color and extremely beautiful galaxies. And the fact that you can get them both within the same field of view it makes for an amazing photo. Uh, they're a decent size too, you can pick up some serious detail in these galaxies even with a small refractor. The next galaxy up is the uh, Pinwheel Galaxy, that's M101. Now this galaxy has some serious size to it, which is great news, and uh, it shows up really well in photographs. The, the difficult part is getting the, uh, the faint uh, spiral dust lanes uh, all the way to the edges of the galaxy. The, the blackness of space around this galaxy really makes for a really nice contrasty image with this color, colorful bright uh, face-on spiral galaxy in the middle of this black area of space. It's just, it's gorgeous. Next up we have the Whale Galaxy which I imaged for the first time last year and uh, I was pleasantly surprised at the, the color and the detail I was able to pull out even from a light polluted area. Uh, as well as the size of this object. I mean, it's small, but uh, it, it wasn't too bad even through uh, an 80 millimeter scope I had back then. 
Next up we have the Whirlpool Galaxy M51. This is another stunner of a galaxy because it's uh, got an interact. It's interacting with um, another galaxy. Uh, so in that other galaxy, it's it's interacting with is uh, NGC 5195. Uh, again, full of color, just blackness of space around it. This is uh, this is the photo that was used at the beginning of the video. M51. Uh, yeah, this is this is kind of a. Uh, if you haven't imaged it before and you, you see, start you see that first frame, you'll just be blown away. Next up, we have the Needle Galaxy. This was the subject of my uh, my first like backyard vlog video on this channel, a night in my backyard. And the Needle Galaxy is uh, medium sized and shows up well in small refractors. It's very interesting because it's directly edge on, so very flat, very long. Uh, and uh, the, you get that bright core with the, the dark dust lane splitting it in the middle. Very satisfying image. I, I like the needle and I might put some more time on it this year. Next we have the Black Eye Galaxy. And uh, this one I chose just for the heck of it uh, a few years back. M Messier 64. And um, it is very cool. It's, it, it has a nice glow to it with some dark uh, detail in the middle. Uh, it is very small though. Through a, a small refractor, it borderlines on uh, un, unimageable with a small refractor. I did it with an 80 millimeter, and it is it's tiny. So I don't want to get your hopes up about this one unless you have a scope with a longer focal length. I wouldn't I wouldn't attempt the black eye unless you just want to kind of see what it looks like. Uh, in the same boat as being very small, and uh, I wouldn't recommend it for a small scope is Messier 104, the Sombrero Galaxy. This is a very cool looking galaxy. It's, uh, you've probably seen the NASA version of this from Hubble. It's got an extreme glow with this, the, uh, the tilt that it's on is so cool. It's just tilted just slightly. Uh, so you can see this, uh, the, the disc around it of dust and this bright glow, glow in the middle. So I hope you're able to get out and take some photos of these galaxies uh, during galaxy season, take advantage of the the cooler, longer nights, and uh, but not so cold that your fingers are numb like we just dealt with in the winter. Um, so if you want to share some of these photos and what you've taken, uh, go ahead and visit the Astro Backyard Facebook page. Um, you can also view the equipment that I'm using to take these photos, uh, as well as my actual photos of the galaxies I talked about, and kind of so you can get an idea of what to expect at astrobackyard.com. There you'll also find tutorials for processing using uh, Deep Sky Stacker and Photoshop. And uh, there's a lot of exciting things to come for uh, the Astro Backyard YouTube channel. And uh, I hope you stay along for the ride with me and keep photographing the night sky whenever, whenever it's clear. Get out there and uh, just know that I'll be in my backyard as well. So uh, all the best and clear skies.